Hello dear learners. In this lecture we will discuss about the histone proteins, how they interact with the DNA, what are the different types of modifications that takes place upon the histone proteins and how this modification alters or regulates the expression of the DNA. Histones. Histones are a group of basic proteins. Basic protein means which are rich in basic amino acids. So, histones, they are a group of basic proteins that associate with DNA. DNA being negatively charged, it has a strong association or it has higher affinity for as a basic proteins or basic amino acids. So, obviously, histones which are made up of basic proteins, they readily interact with the DNA. So, these histone proteins, they help the DNA to condense into a chromatin structure. Histones, they contain a large proportion of positively charged, that is basic amino acids, namely lysine and arginine. So, they make up the large proportion of their structure. DNA, as it is negatively charged due to the phosphate group on its backbone, it interacts with the histone proteins. These results of the opposite charges are strongly attracted to each other, towards each other. Therefore, high affinity or high binding affinity between histones and DNA structure, it forms a structure called as a nucleosome. DNA, DNA wraps around the histone. They also play an important role in gene regulation. The basic unit of chromatin is nucleosome. So, nucleosome, it is a bead on a string like structure. It consists of around 147 base pair of DNA wrapped nearly twice around the octamer, means it takes around 1.5. 7 5 turn means 2 complete turn are not taking place approximately 2 turns so 1.75 turn uh, it takes place on an histone octamer octamer means 8 proteins which are made up of different 4 proteins h2a h2b h3 and h4 so h uh, this 4 proteins they are present in the dimer they form the structure called as an octamer each nucleosome is separated by 10 to 60. It depends upon the condition and type of cell. So, each nucleosome they are separated by 1, 10 to 60 base pairs of linker DNA. And the resulting nucleosomal array, it constitutes the chromosomal fiber of around 10 nanometer in diameter. So, we are pretty familiar with this particular structure, the genome organization. We know in case with eukaryotic cell, this DNA is present in the form of chromosome. But how does the, this particular structure is formed? It st will start with the DNA, which is double helix DNA, the model given by Watson and Crick. This simple or double standard double helix structure, it is made up of four nucleotides, which are associated with one another, forming an Adhesion bonds following the Chergaff rule that is A pairs with T and G pairs with C and vice versa. This structure further it gets condensed and it forms the nucleosome structure. Here this violet color structure they are the octamer which come which consists of the four proteins, the four histone proteins H2A, H2B, H3, H4. And these proteins they are present in dimer so it forms a structure called as an octamer and this coil structure is the dna which is which starts its coiling from here it completes its first turn and before completing the second turn it is transferred or it is taken up in the another histone protein so this particular structure which connects the two histones they are called as an linker dna 
this particular structure which holds this DNA on this structure, we call it as an H1 protein. H1 protein is mainly interacting with the linker DNA and makes that DNA to interact with the nucleosome structure, uh, interact with the histone octamer. So, this nucleosome structure is also known as bead on a string like structure. This structure is not the ultimate structure. This structure is further condensed and it forms a nucleosome, uh, it forms a solenoid structure. Where the chromosome is further condensed and it forms a coiled structure. So, this particular coiled structure it acquires a larger diameter. So, starting from 2 nanometer in double helix structure. In nucleosome, it forms around 11 nanometer structure, while it which get further coiled and it forms a 13 nanometer structure. This structure is further coiled and it forms zigzag structure or solenoid structure, which further forms 300 nanometer diameter structure, which is further condensed. And this is the seventh level of condensation, which forms the structure which we can call it as a chromosome structure. So, which makes up around 100, 1400 nanometer diameter. So, this much structure, uh, this is how the DNA is compacted or it is associated with the proteins, histone proteins and other proteins and it forms a structure which we call it as a chromosome structure. Types of histones. As we have discussed, histones they are group of proteins. Histone proteins are of two types. One is the core protein or core, core histones, which made which are made up of H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. And non-core histone, they are the linker histones, which are interacting more with the linker DNA they are called as a linker histones. So, H1 is a linker histone. The 8 histones in the core are arranged into H2A, H2B, H3, H4. And the dimer of this it forms a 4 protein and the dimer of 4 protein it forms an octamer. So, the tetramer and dimer come together to form a left handed super helix ramp around which the DNA is wrapped. Here we can see this H3H4 and this H2A, H2B, they interact with one another and they form this particular structure upon which the DNA is coiled or it is wrapped. Hydrogen bonds between the DNA backbone and the amide group on the main chain of histone, it forms this type of association. H1, histone H1 is not part of the nucleosome core particle. Instead, it binds to the linker DNA and is referred to as a linker histone. H1 is half as abundant to the other histones, which consist of, which is consistent with the finding that only one molecule of H1 can associate, associate with one nucleosome. H2A. Since H2A packages DNA molecules into chromatin, the packaging process will affect the gene expression. It refers to a variety of closely related proteins that vary often by only a few amino acids. That is, these are evolutionarily conserved proteins. H2A plays important role or major role in determining the overall structure of a chromatin. H2A has been found to regulate gene expression. H2B H2B are, is also involved in the structure of nucleosome of the bead on a string like structure. H3 H3 featuring many globular domains and a long N terminal chain. They are also important protein in emerging field of epigenetics where its sequence variants and variable modification states are thought to play important role in the dynamic 
and long term regulation of the genes. Epigenetics is an area where the sequence of DNA it has nothing to do with the expression. So the sequence instead of sequence the changes or the type of proteins that interact with this particular structure they are going to alter or they, go, they are going to decide which sites of genes will be expressed under what given conditions. H4 is a structural component of nucleosome and is subject to covalent modifications. The major modification we will discuss in coming slide that is acetylation, methylation which may alter the expression of genes located on the DNA associated with its parent histone octamer. Among the four H1, H2A, H2B, H3, H4, H3 and H4 are the evolutionarily conserved proteins. That means these are the proteins if you compare amongst the uh, most of the diverse group of organisms, we will find pretty similarity in their sequence. So here we, in this table also we can see H3 and H4 the number of amino acids they are fixed around 135 and H4102 and they consist of lysine arginine 10% of lysine and 15% of arginine H4 11% of lysine and 4% of arginine well slight variation is allowed or seen in case with the H1 as well as H2A H2B wherein it can the number of amino acid can vary from H129 to 155, H2B from 121 to 148. But all these amino acids they are rich in lysine and arginine, that is basic amino acids. Now the core histones each have an amino terminal extension called as an TELS because it lacks the defined structure and accessible with the intact nucleosome. These tails are rich in number of lysine and arginine residues. The C terminal ends is primarily responsible for histone DNA and histonostrone interaction. The N terminal tails stand as target of post translational modifications, which may modify the structure of chromatin play an essential role in regulation of gene expression. 